Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel. Hidden Rees. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at this infamous eighth continent of our world. But. It's not made by nature. It's made by one organisms, who thinks this world is only for them. None other than. It's human beings. Even that place not made by land, it made by garbages. Today we going to see about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, also known as the Pacific Trash Vortex, is a massive area of oceanic pollution located between Hawaii and California. Making things more complicated, the location of the patch can vary over time, depending on the time of year. It is roughly three times the size of France. The patch covers an estimated surface area of 1.6 million square kilometers. That's twice the size of Texas, or three times the size of France. The patch cannot be seen from space, as is sometimes claimed. Causes of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch There are several factors that contribute to the formation of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. One of the main factors is the improper disposal of plastic waste. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch contains between 1.1 to 3.6 trillion pieces of plastic. When exposed to sunlight, plastic breaks into smaller and smaller pieces, until they are classed as microplastics. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch contains a staggering number of pieces of plastic, estimated to be between 1.1 to 3.6 trillion. That's roughly 200 pieces of plastic for every person on the planet. To understand why there are so many, it's important to understand the way in which plastic decays. It does not biodegrade in the same way that a piece of fruit would. Where does it all come from? 80% from land, brought by sewer systems and rivers to the sea. 20% from ships and ocean sources like nets or fishing gear, many containers fall into the sea after severe storms. Rather, plastic undergoes a process called, photodegradation, whereby it decays when exposed to sunlight. But rather than simply disappear, the plastic breaks into smaller and smaller pieces. This process repeats until you would need a microscope to even be able to see the plastic particles. Once plastic particles are measured at 5 mm or under, they become classed as microplastics. Scientists are unsure whether plastic truly ever disappears, or whether it just keeps breaking into ever smaller pieces. These microplastics can easily be carried by ocean currents and eventually make their way into the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The plastic does not just exist on the surface of the ocean but extends all the way to the seafloor. Some types of plastic are more buoyant than others, and not all plastic floats. Microplastics have been discovered inside the Great Pacific Garbage Patch at every level under the water level, all the way down to the ocean floor. Scientists estimate that up to 70% of the plastic debris in that patch will sink to the bottom of the ocean. How these patch are formed? The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is formed, because of ocean gyres. Gyres are circulating patterns of ocean currents that produce the still waters where plastic accumulates in patches. People sometimes refer to garbage patches as gyres, when in fact garbage patches just result from gyres. These complex circulating patterns teach us a lot about how the different regions of the ocean stay interconnected in spite of the vast distances between them. How do ocean gyres work? With the bookends of the landmasses, the momentum of the wind and the pull of the Earth's rotation, gyres form moving patterns that keep the ocean in perpetual motion. The wind cruises over the surface of the ocean, while the rotation of the Earth tugs at the ocean waves pushing them at a 45-degree angle. The waves turn towards the right in the northern hemisphere and they turn towards the left in the southern hemisphere. This wave-altering motion is known as the Coriolis effect. As the Coriolis effect causes the surface waves to descend into the ocean, the angle gradually tapers off and this shift creates a spiraling motion called an Ekman spiral. This motion performs useful functions by controlling the temperatures, nutrient flows, and salinity of the oceans. The ocean current cycles around a mostly calm and motionless center. So plastic will never escape once it enters the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The movement of ocean streams in circles makes it extremely difficult to get plastic debris out of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch area. The reason debris accumulates in these areas can be explained by really noticing the marine roll. The ocean gyre works like a huge circular conveyor belt. This means that once the debris has entered, it becomes very difficult to escape. Since the late 1970s and 1980s, 
Scientists were cognizant of plastic trash in the oceans, and oceanographers predicted that an issue of trash convergence in the ocean was likely to occur. In 1997, yachtsman Captain Charles Moore participated in the famous Trans-Pacific Race from California to Hawaii. A lover of the ocean, Moore decided to take the scenic route on the way back to California. He meandered south from the normal path, where he was shocked to discover an unexpected view. Instead of blue skies and rolling waves, Moore found himself looking out on a field of plastic. He wrote of this discovery, As I gazed from the deck at the surface of what ought to have been a pristine ocean, I was confronted, as far as the eye could see, with the sight of plastic. It seemed unbelievable, but I never found a clear spot. In the week it took to cross the subtropical high, no matter what time of day I looked, plastic debris was floating everywhere. Bottles, bottle caps, wrappers, fragments. Charles Moore alerted the oceanographer, Curtis Ebesmeyer who proceeded to officially call it the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. There are extremely dangerous effects that these plastics and other materials are having on the health of ocean life and the food chain, including the following. Trash is eaten by sea turtles and albatrosses which affects sea animals higher up on the food chain such as sharks, whales, and tuna. Animals feel full eating trash so they do not hunt for food, and slowly starve to death. Trash can also cause injuries to an animal's organs. Abandoned fishing gear such as ghost nets become entangled around sea life and injure and kill marine animals. Microplastics create cloudiness in the water that deprives plankton and algae of oxygen and sunlight. Plankton and algae are important sources of food for turtles and fish. Plastics enter the food chain when sea animals ingest microplastics and their resultant chemicals. These smaller animals are eaten by larger sea animals, and then humans eat the toxic fish, a process known as bioaccumulation. Due to overfishing and marine animal death from pollution, there is an impending shortage of seafood which will affect the global food chain supply. The heat released from disintegrating plastics and the ocean releases greenhouse gases, further exacerbating global warming as the plastic breaks down into ethylene and methane. Much of the plastic and trash particles contain toxic chemicals known as PBT, persistent bioaccumulative toxic. The ocean cleanup found that 84% of the plastics they studied from the GPGP contained a PBT chemical. While the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is perhaps the most well-known and extensively studied ocean garbage patch, there are several other areas in the world's oceans that are also affected by plastic pollution. These include North Atlantic Garbage Patch. This is a region in the North Atlantic Ocean that is similar in size and composition to the GPGP. Indian Ocean Garbage Patch. This is an area in the Indian Ocean that contains a high concentration of plastic waste. South Atlantic Garbage Patch. This is a region in the South Atlantic Ocean that is known to contain high levels of plastic pollution. Mediterranean Sea Garbage Patch. This is a region in the Mediterranean Sea that is affected by plastic pollution, largely due to the high levels of tourism and human activity in the region. The impact of these patches not ended in ocean, but also resulted in Earth atmosphere. It affects the production of oxygen. Most of us are believe our Earth oxygen is mostly got from trees and plants. But that's not true. Because the 70% of Earth oxygen were got from phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are microscopic organisms that float in the upper layers of the ocean and are a crucial component of the marine food web. They play an important role in the global carbon cycle by absorbing large amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through photosynthesis. In fact, it is estimated that phytoplankton are responsible for up to 70% of the Earth's oxygen production. However, the presence of plastic pollution in the ocean, including in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch can have negative impacts on phytoplankton and the marine ecosystem as a whole. Here are some of the ways in which plastic pollution can affect phytoplankton. Reduced sunlight. Plastic waste can block sunlight from reaching the surface of the ocean, which can reduce the amount of light available for photosynthesis by phytoplankton. Toxin accumulation. Plastic debris in the ocean can absorb and accumulate toxins, such as heavy metals and persistent organic pollutants. When phytoplankton ingest plastic particles, they may also be ingesting these toxins, which can harm their growth and reproductive success. Microplastic ingestion. Phytoplankton can also ingest microplastics, which are small plastic particles that are less than 5 mm in size. This can harm the phytoplankton and potentially impact the entire marine food web 
as phytoplankton are a primary food source for many marine organisms. The impact of plastic pollution on phytoplankton is concerning because of their crucial role in the Earth's oxygen production and the marine food web. Overall, human activities are a major contributor for these garbage patches. Human thinks, whatever we did to this world, it's replenish itself. Yes, the nature has ability to replenish itself, but the process of replenish is very dangerous to humanity. So be kind to the nature and the nature also shows kind to us. Like Ocean Cleanup. The Ocean Cleanup is a non-profit organization that is working to remove plastic waste from the world's oceans, including the Great Pacific Garbage Patch started by a Dutch teenager named Boyan Slat. According to the Ocean Cleanup's website, as of May 2023, their systems have removed over 350,000 kilograms of plastic waste from the ocean, including a significant amount from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. While this is a significant achievement, it is important to note that the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is a vast area and removing all the plastic waste from it will require a sustained effort over many years. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe to our channel for more interesting video.